This video will review 10 questions you may see on the FAA Part 107 Remote Pilot Exam. Let's jump into the questions. A stall occurs when the smooth airflow over the unmanned airplane's wing is disrupted and the lift degenerates rapidly. This is caused when the wing. To answer this question, let's do a quick review of what causes a stall. An airplane will stall when the critical angle of attack is exceeded. Angle of attack is the angle that is formed by the cord of the airfoil and the direction of the relative wind. The correct answer is C. Moving on to question 2. Safety is an important element for a remote pilot to consider prior to operating an unmanned aircraft system. To prevent the final link in the accident chain, a remote pilot must consider which methodology? According to the Remote Pilot Study Guide provided by the FAA, the goal of risk management is to proactively identify safety-related hazards and mitigate the associated risks. As shown in the diagram on the bottom right, risk management involves a six-step process that can be used to substantially decrease or even eliminate risks when flying an unmanned aircraft. The correct answer is C. Question 3 asks. You are a remote pilot for a co-op energy service provider. You are to use your unmanned aircraft to inspect power lines in a remote area 15 hours away from your home office. After the drive, fatigue impacts your abilities to complete your assignment on time. Fatigue can be recognized. Option A is not correct because typically fatigue is not easily recognized by a pilot. Answer C is not correct because fatigue is the inability, not the ability, to overcome sleep deprivation. Answer B is the best answer, since being fatigued would be classified as being in an impaired state. Refer to the chart on the right. What airport is located approximately 47 degrees 40 minutes north latitude and 101 degrees 26 minutes west longitude? Each tick mark on the map represents one minute of latitude or longitude as illustrated by the red arrows. Since there are 60 minutes of latitude between each line of latitude, we know that the yellow arrow represents 47 degrees and 30 minutes north latitude. Just count up 10 tick marks to find 47 degrees 40 minutes north latitude. Counting 26 tick marks to the left of the 101 degree longitude line, we get 101 degrees, 26 minutes west longitude. Therefore, the airport located at 47 degrees 40 minutes north and 101 degrees 26 minutes west is Garrison Airport. Refer to the figure at the bottom right of the screen. What are the current conditions for Chicago Midway Airport? To answer this question, let's do a quick recap of how to read a METAR. Starting from left, the first two digits indicate the day of the month, and the last four digits indicate the Zulu time the report was issued. So the report at Chicago Midway was issued at 1856 Zulu on the 12th day of the month. 32005 followed by the letter K and T indicate the wind direction and speed. The first three digits indicate the wind direction, and the last two digits indicate the wind speed. The current winds at Chicago Midway Airport are at 320 degrees true at 5 knots. The numbers 1 and 1 half followed by the letters S and M indicate the visibility. Current visibility at Chicago Midway Airport is 1 and 1 half statute miles. The abbreviation RA stands for rain. The letters O, V, and C stand for overcast and the digits 007 indicate the height of the cloud coverage. Just add two zeros to 007 to get 700. For example, if the report had the letters O, V, and C followed by the digits 020, that would indicate overcast skies at 2,000 feet. The digits 17 and 16 indicate the temperature and dew point in degrees Celsius. The correct answer is A. Question 6 asks. The wind direction and velocity at KJFK is from. Recall from the previous slide that the wind direction and speed is indicated by the second set of digits. 
In this case, the digits 18004 followed by the letter K and T means the winds are from 180 degrees true at 4 knots. One way to remember whether the winds are magnetic versus true is the phrase if it's in print, then it must be true. That means that all wind directions shown on a METAR and TAF are the true directions, not magnetic. According to CFR Part 107, what is required to operate a small, unmanned aircraft within 30 minutes after official sunset? According to CFR Part 107.29, no person may operate a small, unmanned aircraft system at night unless the small, unmanned aircraft has lighted anti-collision lighting visible for at least three statute miles that has a flash rate sufficient to avoid a collision. To ensure that the unmanned aircraft center of gravity limits are not exceeded, follow the aircraft loading instructions specified in the Before conducting flight operations, the remote pilot in command should verify the aircraft is correctly loaded by determining the correct weight and balance conditions of the aircraft, as specified in the pilot's operating handbook or flight manual for the unmanned aircraft. According to CFR Part 107, who is responsible for determining the performance of a small, unmanned aircraft. The remote pilot in command is responsible for determining the performance of a small, unmanned aircraft. See the Federal Aviation Regulations Part 107.19 and 107.49 for more information on the pilot in command's responsibilities when conducting a remote flight. The chart shows a gray line with the letters and numbers VR1667, VR1617, VR1638, and VR1668. Could this area present a hazard to the operations of a small, unmanned aircraft? These letters and symbols which are highlighted in the chart represent military training routes and are used by military aircraft to maintain proficiency in tactical flying maneuvers. Military training routes with four digits represent military flights at or below 1,500 feet above ground level. Military training routes with three digits represent military flights above 1,500 feet above ground level. So, the military training routes highlighted in the yellow box would indicate VFR flight at 1,500 feet or below. This would indicate a potential hazard to the operations for a small, unmanned aircraft. The correct answer is B. Thank you for watching this video. Please like the video and subscribe for more Part 107 test questions and other aviation-related educational videos.